Breaking news overnight, Israel retaliates against Iran. There are reports of at least one explosion in a city 200 miles away from Iran's capital in Tehran. And this comes after five days. Iran fired more than 300 drones and missiles at Israel, nearly all of which were intercepted and downed with help of the U.S. Eyewitness News reporter Reagan Meji is live outside of the U.N. on Manhattan's east side. Reagan, good morning. Good morning, guys. And the strikes not hitting a nuclear site, but striking near an Iranian Air Force base that houses fighter jets. In video posted online, these flashes in the sky show Iran's air defense in action. A senior U.S. official telling ABC News Israeli missiles hit a site in Iran. This could potentially, it has clear potential to spark a major confrontation between Iran and Israel. Iranian state media reporting an explosion was heard in a city outside of Isfahan, not far from a major military base and nuclear facility, adding the nuclear facility was not damaged. Hours before the attack, Israel's defense minister saying Israel has the freedom of action to do what it wants. Some analysts say tension between the two countries puts the U.S. in a difficult position. We had stated that we would not support uh, an attack by Israel against Iran. Well, will we support Israel when Iran counter retaliates? The escalation ladder is going to get harder and harder to uh, control. Commercial flights were suspended over several Iranian cities, including the capital of Tehran. Airports now back to normal operations. After sunrise, video from Isfahan shows life continuing with weekday morning traffic moving. And back here in New York, the NYPD working with Jewish community leaders, ensuring that there will be heightened security. As you know, Passover is on Monday. We're live here on the east side. Reagan Medjie, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Reagan, thank you. For more, let's bring in ABC's Tom Sufi Burridge live in Tel Aviv for us this morning. Tom, in the hours since the retaliatory attack, we've seen images and videos of the scenes in the area, and they look normal look like things return to normalcy so what are the details on this retaliatory attack from israel yeah, that's right, Pedro. You look, what we know from a U.S. official is that Israel has conducted a, a strike on Iranian territory. That's the main headline this morning uh, overnight in retaliation for that barrage of Iranian missiles and drones which hit here uh, at the weekend. Now, the details exactly of the nature of the attack, the, the impact of the attack are a bit sketchy at this point in time. What we know is that there were multiple explosions uh, near the city of Isfahan in central Iran. Uh, we know that uh, a military Iranian base is in that area. Uh, we know from Iranian state media uh, apparently that drones were used in the attack but we can't confirm that detail right now but the two important caveats right now is firstly that Iranian state media that's the mouthpiece for the regime in Tehran is playing this attack down they're showing those scenes of normalcy as you said uh, they're also saying that nuclear facilities in the area were untouched and they're really kind of in their rhetoric painting a picture of a limited attack. The, the second major caveat is that the Israeli government officially is not claiming this attack in any way at all. So both sides appear at least to be playing this one down and that is critical for moving away from that potential spiral of violence which everybody fears. Wow, it's so tense and it, it seems like we might be in a cycle, Tom. The question now, will Iran respond and, and what could actually come next? Where could this lead to? Yeah, Shante, we've got a really important line coming out of the Reuters news agency quoting an Iranian official saying there will be no immediate response from Iran. Now, that doesn't mean that the regime in Tehran could respond further down the line. But again, like this is the kind of rhetoric the, the signal, I think, from the Israeli government from this attack, if, if we try and analyze it, is look, they put a message out to Iran on the face of it to say we can strike you. But it doesn't seem to be a, a massive, massive strike on Iranian territory. There are reports of strikes also coming from Syrian media of strikes in Syria, potentially not confirmed against Iranian proxies in the region. So look, this is the wider picture. One Israeli government minister, a hardline member of Netanyahu's coalition, Itamar ben Gavir, putting out a cryptic tweet, uh, an apparent response to this attack saying, uh, not enough or weak, maybe, is, is the kind of translation. And that appears to be a signal uh, from at least somebody in the Israeli coalition that this is an Israeli strike and that it doesn't 
sort of satisfy hardliners like him, but it might satisfy many people in Israel that wanted to see some kind of response, some kind of deterrence, but didn't want to see all-out war. You know, our Josh Eidinger was reporting in Israel all week, and he told us that he spoke to many Israelis who do not want to see an attack, that it's not a very popular decision, at least on the ground for Netanyahu. So, Tom Sufi Burge, thank you very so much for that live report for us in Tel Aviv. Now, stay with us throughout the morning. Our coverage continues in the next half hour and on Good Morning America. Back here at home.